Welcome to my channel and welcome to my mystery DP as you can see from the picture there. Sorry, just try and get my angles. Now, I started to take these out but if you can see this piece here, it's pretty confetti heavy. I'm not even going to try. So I'm going to go methodical this time round. Uh, I'm going to go from one through all of the colours in the order of the tub. Let's see how we go. All right. Um, grab your work, grab your cuppas, um, and uh, let's see where the journey takes us today. Um, this is a bit of a middle of the project kind of piece. I've got a little drawer in my gut here, basically. So I'm going to pull that out and, um... I think most of this is going to be single placing. Uh, so I might get um, a Rich Craft three placer. And it hasn't been used for a while. So just um, re stickying the blue tack. And that's probably all kinds of festy. All right, look, grab your cuppas, grab your work, do whatever it is you would like to do. Okay. Um, as usual, I'm recording on a Sunday and I guess it's, well, I don't know if it's an Aussie thing, but weddings happen on Sundays in Australia. They don't happen in Sundays in Ireland, mostly because the church is busy and you have to get married in a church um, in Ireland, unless you're having a civil service that's the building that's registered not the uh, officiant um, which is you know a little bit interesting and different so my son got married a couple of hours ago up in Sydney now I will my middle boy um I will put in a photo I don't know if it'll come out let me just say here in Tassie it's gray and dreary and it's been raining most of the day and started yesterday um sydney at the moment or central coast where he's getting where he got married is blue skies and gorgeous golden beaches and it's just ha, can we go there bloody covid no, no. <laughs> no the ministers wouldn't let us we even got an email uh yesterday i think it was an email came through saying hey we got your exemption application no you can't go and it was like Oh, you, yeah, officials. Yeah, no, we didn't have a. Good, we didn't pass the criteria for um, going. You, he could have been dead, and I could have gone potentially, but well, not if he was. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it it wasn't going to happen. So uh, he had his brother and his dad, and then he had um, Brittany's parents were there and some friends and it was you know a reasonably quiet get together um we got to watch it on zoom which was really cool uh and then uh kind of got disconnected and left them all to it and it was like we couldn't even say congratulations to them anyway i phoned him just before he was getting married and um he was so relaxed it was I think typical of Simon to be as relaxed and laid back as he was and other people I think were panicking and he was just like it's fine and yeah um, it was pretty cool um, at first the photographer kept getting in the way and some of the sound quality wasn't the best so I missed what they said in their vows and uh, it using their cheek and sass so I have asked him if he could send me the vows down so I can read them because we couldn't hear them. Either that or we'll get a better recording. Um, but 
yeah, we'll see how we go. But it was still very, very nice to be there. And I had two, I think it was two from the family over in Ireland. Actually hadn't gone to bed yet, um, my sister said. Um, they were watching as well. So that was really, really cool that they also made the effort for my boy um, to be at the wedding. So yeah, really, really cool. And it's my niece's birthday t today, yesterday, tomorrow, that one. Yeah, to it's today in Australia. It's actually tomorrow in Ireland. It's her, my niece's birthday. Uh, yeah, I think she's turning 30. She's the same age as my daughter that I gave up for adoption. Um, something like that, thereabouts. Or Ian, I can't remember. But she's, yeah, she's close to my own or, yeah, family, joys. So, um... I've had a week off. I have to work one day next week and I have my um, back procedure at the end of next week. But other than that, we've got a pretty cruisy week. Um, we went for a drive in the Midlands yesterday and had a pub lunch and stopped in the town, I went for a bit of a walk. Um, it's it's a one horse town. It's a you know single road um, that's been bypassed by the main highway, and I don't think I've ever ever gone into it. I don't recall ever going into it. Um, but I will pop some photos in here of the coach house, as it's called. It's now the Senior Citizens Centre, um, and. <laughs> Seriously, this bemuses me. This is a beautiful historic little town. There are buildings scattered through that are from 1826, 1829, 1840, and 1918 was one of the other houses that I pointed out to the kids as we were walking past them. They've got plaques everywhere, right? Well, whoever organized the electricity back in the day decided that the pretty ornate coach house which is basically an archway with a clock tower on the top okay it's it looks like a stirrup shape so it's you know it's domed with a piece at the top clock tower up the top and the geniuses decided let's put the electricity t wires on that side of the street not on the other side of the street where there was nothing overly pretty they put them on the pretty building side of the street and I'm like, why it just didn't make any sense to me. So, unfortunately, you've got these god-awful wires in front of this beautiful old clock tower in the sandstone. And there's two little windows up in the middle of the clock tower. I don't know if they're on the front, which is the side I took the photo from. But you could see them at the back. And I'm kind of going, why are there a couple of windows in the clock tower? And Marcus, my husband, his dad used to maintain the clock tower in the church in a town called Boswell well, and hang on. It's more complicated than that. no uh, it's going to be as simple as that oh, right. okay. so he used to climb up this little ladder up the spire anyway to maintain the clock Prepared. well there is no door <laughs> and I looked on all four sides there is no door to get up into the clock tower for the windows to be of any use. I'm going to, I was using windows in a stone building. Well, there's a little trap door actually uh, under the wooden floorboards that like runs under it so that, you know, you need a ladder to get up to the trap door and then you've got windows to be able to work on the clock that would still be, you know, above your head. But it's it, really, really cute how they've designed it and, yeah, no visible doors or anything. Um, and I think it was an 18... 20 something um creation and it's not convict stone it's um rough hewn um sandstone and i didn't take any close-up shots of it so you just you may not get quite the idea but it's lumpy sandstone it's not smooth and the convict sandstone has like one inch um lines through it on the whole face of the rock. I don't quite know why the convicts did that, but they call it convict sandstone. And um, that is a big, big feature. I don't know. Um, but all of the stone um, that's uh, around 
a lot of the buildings back then they're known as being convict stone convict sandstone and convict built and they have this particular kind of theme about them with this little hashed stone face um, but no I don't know the actual history as to why it is a hashed stone face um, oh yeah. but um, so that was pretty and then it got to the stage on the drive back because I had taken meds before we went, but and the car is comfortable, but um, it was getting a bit kind of long in the tooth. And by the end of the day, um, I'm glad we called it when we did to start heading back south because it's only 45 minutes up north, up the road. Um, so it's not far. And um, it was a case of following the yellow road on the map, which are... C no B roads so A is the highway and B roads are the yellow and then C roads are the white Cali. no can't be no it must be a C road is the yellow because we were on a yellow road for a bit and then it was the white one and I thought oh this is good it's just going to vanish so anyway we followed the C roads and it was uh, you know getting to a junction do we go left or do we go right and you know it was kind of like tossing a coin and it got to one point where I said there's a, there's a road here we could take. It's white on the map. I don't know if it's going to peter out or what it's going to do. And Hubby missed it. So he went around, turned around, and then he missed it on the way back. And it was just like, forget it. Just keep going. Um, but we went through these tiny little, I don't know what you call them, townships. Not even townships. There's houses. And it was rolling hills. And it's... Um, Coming from Ireland, which is glacial and glacial valleys, which, you know, have truncated spurs and all those kind of things that I learned in my geography class. This land was like a lumpy quilt. Um, you know, your granny, we call them dunas here, duvet, quilt, bedspread, the puffy bedding that you would find on, you know, maybe your grandparents' bed suites. It was like that. The, the hills were these dumpy little hills and it was bizarre. I'm looking at it going, this is just like a completely foreign land. And it was green, not green like Ireland, it, but it was, you know, it was lush for a Tasmanian point of view. And I do have photos that will be either been and gone and you'll have seen them or I'll peter them through um, for the last few minutes. And... Um, yeah, it was just incredible just looking at these and then, you know, you'd get the occasional farmstead as you went. Um, some places when when you were in the real rural bit, there was no sign of humans. It was just these rolling hills. It was, you know, discrete farms and everything else. When you started to get towards suburbia, there was something I mentioned to you. It was, you started getting the warning posts. Um, you started getting the keep off signs, the private signs, and there was none of this when it was rural, but when it was kind of semi-rural, you kind of got this, you know, keep off, stay away kind of attitude. And it was kind of like, wow, you know, you, you welcome to whatever it was, Suburbanville. Um, very, very strange, the, the difference, I suppose, and the, you know, in the country here, you get the occasional wave, especially if you give way. In Ireland, if you're in the country, on the green roads, as we call them, um, where you've got grass actually down the centre of the road, and Rachel has... If you've ever watched Rachel Ray's videos where she takes us on a drive, they're what I call green roads. <laughs> they're her local roads. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so we had some green roads and everything, but um, country um, manners where you flick a finger... That kind of thing happens in this kind of area, but not so much in cities at all. In fact, in the cities you get road rage. Um, yeah, uh, but it's been a crazy weekend for traffic here. We've had multiple accidents with fatalities, which has been really, really crap. Um, so the news on that has been quite devastating. We've actually also had a 19 year old who went kayaking in a fairly well I don't know how shallow the whole bay is but he went kayaking on one side of the bay 
went missing as surf got up or something and washed up on the opposite side of the bay um so again in a local kind of community there's people that are absolutely devastated by that so that's again you know um a bit of a kind of downer so and he was you know just curly haired kid um you know younger than my own kids <laughs> you know except for sophie um yeah hopefully doing what he loved um but yeah, it's a bit sad, but um, what else have I been doing? I have been watching the last two or three Harry Potter movies while I've been stitching the Not A Mermaid stitch along. <laughs> I don't have any mermaid movies. Um, so yes, yeah, I'm a bit light on on mermaid movies. If you've got any mermaid movies, please recommend them. <laughs> I did think about, <laughs> not cartoons, I did think about watching Sirens again, just to, you know, kind of get into the whole theme of, you know, it's not a mermaid. Sorry? Uh, I thought we did. Oh, we were watching it. Like, it's quite good. Um, so, um, oh, you interrupted me, and that's what she's, she's now started to get in between the raised voices. Um, this kid. Um, yeah. Uh, what else did we do? Um, she had fish and chips when we were out at that pub lunch. Um, I think she found that a bit interesting. Um, other than that, she was just walking. Um, I'm trying to think, what else have we been doing? We were doing something. I went to meet up with a friend from um, who was on some time off as well and took the dog to the dog park. Um, it was one of the really windy days, but it was quite sunny. But unfortunately, I think we sat in the shade and by the end of the hour and a half sitting on the bench, I felt like I'd seized up. Um, so apart from it being a lovely day and the dog having a ball with other dogs, which was really, really nice for him. They were really well mannered at one point, And my dog is a beagle, so loyal only to his nose, um, which can be a little bit frustrating when you're out and about trying to call the bastard. And he's just gone off on a scent, because that's what they do. Um, so at one point, he was right across the park. And I did the old um, come hither yell. And he's looking around going, where am I? And did the whole arms out, you know, making myself as big as I could. And he came tearing towards me. It was so cool. Because... As I say, he's loyal only to his nose. And then he had some other young beagle come up to him. And this girl was just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Almost a spitting image of each other. But she was years younger, you could tell. And when the owner came up to us, who was um, pregnant, maybe about five, six months pregnant, um, with this cute little belly and it was like how old is she and she goes oh she's just about a year old and yeah poor Maka was struggling to keep up by the end of this poor girl <laughs> tearing around with them I was like oh Maka you're feeling old but uh, no he had a ball and she was she was gorgeous she was really really friendly she came up and she did the whole kind of um, lying on her back for a tummy rub and um, it just beautiful beautiful soft ears of beagle soft ears um, and just gorgeous absolutely gorgeous uh, yeah so that was a fun day for him and then we got the wind and the rain and yeah it's um it's only good weather for ducks today what yeah no I didn't get a tummy rub no um what did I get I got a chocolate eclair and a hot chocolate I tried to behave by not having a coffee at 12 o'clock and had hot chocolate instead. And I did ask, and I will show this because I will get one this year. Um, I asked if they had opened up the orders for gingerbread houses for Christmas yet. And she's the girl that I was talking to said, oh, uh, no, maybe in a couple of weeks um, they will open those orders up. Now, the last time I had a gingerbread house they were, oh God, it, it must be 
Well, it, okay. It's been at least five years. So five years is my, kind of my one mark for um, leaving the original family home. So five years. I haven't had a gingerbread house here. Um, I, we t might have tried making one. Uh, we, not from this, not from this shop though. And then before then, I know I tried making one one year. So it may be ten years since I've had one. Maybe even a bit longer from this particular um, French bakery. And when I had one, it was around about the fifty dollar mark. They're not cheap, but it was stuffed full of meringues inside. So it wasn't just the gingerbread house you were getting. And the gingerbread house was, you know, A4 kind of height. Um, you know, it was a good size house, proper house. Uh, yeah, but with um, meringues inside. And because it's a French chef, it was just yummy. I did try making one since, but you, I don't know what you have to do to make the side square, whether you cut it while it's still warm or what you do to, um, to make sure it stands properly and then icing the thing oh my god i used so much icing trying to stick this thing together it was just like oh no i can't do this now i've got a friend excuse me down the valley in um Hewenville, down the channel sorry uh, down the the river estuary down hobart um she runs a cafe now and she has been doing bakery no, sorry not bakery classes hot, um gingerbread making classes uh, down in the valley and um, I have watched her doing her classes but it's uh, I think it's an hour maybe an hour and a half drive and that's not the kind of thing that you want to be doing late in the evening but she gets such good local community support it's really really cool to see um, how business is going they've opened up I think they've opened up a second venue in the pub where they do um, different kind of catering um, but she's probably one of the few businesses down there it uh, started out actually at well it didn't start out but I met her when she was a missionary with uh, a service called YWAM Youth with a Mission um, her husband is American she's Australian she's actually Victorian she's from country Victoria and they came here as newlyweds I think helping out with the Bible college that was in the city um, which at the time was called Tabor and now it's called something else and um, she uh, went into the catering I don't know what she was doing before that but they've got two boys I think I think it's two boys um, and he's Canadian and he ended up uh, studying law and got his law degree and now does um, immigrant uh, legal whatever. Um, so helps with the migrants. Um, so yeah, that's um, a big, big change for him. Um, so very, very proud of this young couple um, who've done that. They had been heading up a lot of young adults kind of things they like doing the whole um, being in the remote towns. So they had been living in a town called Jeeveston for a while, which um, probably has, I don't know, 5,000 people, maybe. Um, so quite small communities. But they would be communities that would otherwise be missed by uh, the churches and things like that. So he was, you know, kind of shepherding this arm uh, down there and... Um, I just yeah this they're awesome 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 people and Michelle used to make the most gorgeous cake um she made um a cake for my middle boy when he was probably six she made a chocolate mud cake um for and it was so rich it was incredible and then she's gone on since and you know actually got into proper catering from that little kitchen start um, that she was doing so it's you know small starts and they were never you know too proud not to live in you know that is equivalent of the council estate the dodgy area they were never um, kind of detached from what went on in their locality so um, 
it was difficult for them, but um, he was lawn mowing as well for quite a while, just making ends meet. Um, that was the attitude, it was just a can-do attitude. Um, amazing, amazing couple. Um, and his dad had, I think his dad had a beard and he looked like Santa Claus. It was, he, when he came and visited, he, and he, because he has the German heritage, I think he has the, the German name, um, I can't think, it's something like Magnus, I don't think it's Magnus, but something like Magnus. Um, yeah, and, and looks like Santa. So yeah, it was really, really nice having them visit as well, many, 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 many years ago. Gosh, I haven't thought of them in ages. Uh, the plan next week, I think hubby wants to go for another drive again. Um, well, we'll see how we go. Yeah, Yeah. see, he's hunting for a pub as a pub stop. And potentially even a lunch. Um... Yeah, so he's thinking, okay, he's thinking meal as a bit of a break, um, as, an as an excuse to get out and do something. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's quite amazing how um, we can drive 40 minutes and be in the middle of nothing but rolling hills, two houses, if even... And, um, you know, we're 10 minutes from the city ourselves. So 40 minutes further past, um, you're, you're into, um, Hicksville. Um, it's, um, it's an amazing little state from that point of view. Um, a friend of mine posted on Facebook saying that she lived in, a suburb when you tell people the suburb that you live in they go oh my god it's so far away it's 25 minutes it's where I actually used to live she was in the same suburb she's just on a different um I say suburb <laughs> yeah district I don't know it, it it was a big sprawl and she was on a little headland um you know further in towards the city that geographically than me but yeah as the crow flies it's got the best views of the uh, mountain over the city but you're in the middle of peace and quiet and silence except for the birds and they can be noisy so yeah and uh, yeah hubby says devils at night but I, no we never had devils we didn't even have ruse on our property because the dogs kept them out and we were in the middle of trees in my old house um so no i don't think there was devils around um, occasionally you hear cars. Um, when I was working out on the uh, board there, you can barely see it. Um, working on that thread board, I was outside on the deck with Sophie on Tuesday. Uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful day. Sun was blazing, so I had my hat on, my Kubra. Um, Sophie was out painting with me and there was someone up the hill who was um I don't know chainsawing if <laughs> oh god it was just this machine buzzing the whole time and then there was cars revving and it was just like oh god people <laughs> you know and I know they were miles away from me but it was just like oh just for peace and quiet and just to hear the birds and the birds were going nuts too um yeah it was kind of thing oh yeah I miss the I miss the country um, but anyway, we'll get there at some stage. We want a um, bit of land. Hubby wants a double brick log cabin. No, I'm doing the wrong one. Um, double slash. I picked it up looking at the eight, but it's not eight. It's actually the double slash. Oops. Yeah. Um, hubby's dream is to have a double brick log cabin. I don't know how that quite works. <laughs> um, yeah. 
Um, I don't know where I'd even start in designing a house. I don't know if there's a perfect house out there for me. Um, I did like having the central kitchen. I have had a central kitchen in the last house. I love the um, cathedral ceilings. They are fantastic. You don't have the, um, the, the low ceiling kind of feeling. Uh, I love the wall-to-wall -wall windows, especially if you are not overlooked. I think that's amazing to be able to have curtains open and just be able to look out and it's just ugh, like there's no wall. Excuse me. Oh, she's. What are you doing? Are you going to your shop? Oh, she's taking a stool. You going to the shop? Okay, you go to the shop. You're going to get Carmen to the shop? Okay, you're going to get milk? Okay. Oh, right. Uh, okay. Well, the milk is out in the bin if they want the bottle. Sorry? Did, did you say tinned milk? Oh. Oh, dear. I struggled on the trip when we went for food. When the kid goes, I'll have a cheeseburger. And then proceeded not to eat it. The chips were the best. But I was like, ah. So yeah. Pippa, shut up. Pippa, shut up. This is me in my own head. I'm going to kill her. <laughs> Trust me not. Oh dear. I don't, yeah. I don't know how she does it. I don't know how... She goes from two completely different homes, back and forth. Um, I wouldn't say I'm proud of how she does it, because uh, mm, that gets frustrating too, but I still don't know how she does it. Anyway, <coughs> moving on. Potatoes. Excuse me, madam. Yeah, you look like you're dangling your balls over there, but anyway. Uh, two sacks of balls. <laughs> He's got potatoes. Kennebecs, in fact. We don't normally do Kennebecs at dinner time I for a roast. No, but we don't have any Nicholas. Oh my god! So, Eddie, he didn't get to... the shopping organised last week. Do you want me to drive down to the shop and get Nicholas? No, no Kennebecs. Oh, I can do that. No, Kennebecs will be I fine. Do... I will be a martyr and no, have Kennebecs. No, 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 I'm quite happy to be a martyr because then I could go and get some beer. Oh, god. You're not even dressed. Oh, no, it could be if it was worth the beer. Well, I'm not your mother, so. Or I could just have a burger. Yeah, bourbon sounds fine. So you don't mind cannabis? No, I don't mind cannabis. Okay. No. They have a different breed of potatoes in Tasmania. Tasmania is a good potato island because it's cold, but they have nothing like Irish potatoes. Um, and in some ways that's a good thing. We have a thing called a pink eye potato. Now, down on the South Arm Peninsula, which is the peninsula I used to live on, is a J-shaped peninsula, okay? Now, Tasmania is a giant anthill, but down on the coast, it's a sand pit too. So this J peninsula has um, a very, very sandy soil, so it's really, really light. And it's really good for growing the pink eye potatoes, which is a pale potato with pink eyes. And when they're new in the summertime, so Christmas time, they come out. Um, there is a huge um, drive to buy South Arm pink eye potatoes. Not just pink eyes, but South Arm pink eyes because of the sandy soil. Um, so buying them new and then being able to just... Um, scrubbing brush the skin off is just incredible. I will try and show you 
when they do come in season. Um, but yeah, they're a firm uh, potato and you usually just give them a light boil or even a steam and then slather them in butter and eat or potato salad. And I do the potato salad with half mayonnaise, half sour cream, bacon, spring onion, green onion, scallion, whatever you want to call it. Um, and that's the potato salad. And um, yeah, it's absolutely, oh, they're just beautiful. Now, Irish potatoes, you either had waxy potatoes or soapy, po no, yes, waxy and soapy. Okay. So your waxy were a waxy kind of consistency. It was really, really weird. You use them for roasting, you think. You didn't use them for the other, for mashing. And then the soapy potato used to, or sorry, not soapy, waxy and floury. So, and the floury used to just kind of explode into this powder. So, oh no, the floury you would use for the roast because it goes all light and fluffy. So like the inside, the best chips you've ever eaten with the fluffy insides that you can kind of just eat with your tongue you know, with no teeth kind of thing, and it just mushes in your mouth. Um, well, there's certain functions for the waxy and certain functions for the floury. Um, and that was it. That was your variety. Here, they've got names on all the potatoes. Um, I think in the UK, they actually have names on the potatoes as well. So they've got the King Edwards, they've got, you know, and different potatoes do different things. Um, and Tazzy has kind of taken a after that. Um, there is one supermarket, though, coals that uh, sell potatoes they don't name their potatoes they have white potatoes and they have something else and it's just like oh geez I just need to get the variety I get the Nicola potatoes the Nicola potatoes are good for steaming they're good for roasting um, they're good for mashing they're a good all-rounder and the Kennebecs are our favorites for the chips cannot find out this information on this supermarket what these bloody potatoes are drives me bonkers that was one of the reasons why I was ever put off shopping at the store uh, because they didn't identify what the potatoes were um, the only other good thing about Coles is that they have an abundance of Irish chocolate so I go in there and I buy out 10 bars or something at a go which reminds me I'm out of chocolate Please send help. I'm probably not. I probably have one bar kind of left and a whole bunch of lollies, but I want chocolate. Um, yeah. And they only do the Cadbury's Dairy Milk. They don't do the variety bars like the Fruit and Nut or the Tiffin. Tiffin is my favourite because it's got biscuits in it. Um, biscuits and raisins. Um, and Dad, when he used to be able to mail... Um, out to me he would write a note on a scrap of paper like a scrap of paper like half torn envelope kind of thing saying um, here's your chocolate um, lots of love dad <laughs> that was the scrap and it was a euro 50 or something in the letter um, that he could get away with sending me a bar of chocolate it was awesome um, but yeah, because of COVID, he hasn't sent any chocolate for months and months and months. Because as you know, again, if you watch Rachel, you will know that there has been no mail service to Australia from Ireland for forever and a day. And I don't know why this is, because I ordered a, an item from Ireland to here and it's in transit before the shutdown. And it didn't say that there was a limit on being able to ship things out, maybe because it was being couriered. I don't know. And I've always been able to get stuff from the UK. So I don't know why Ireland has their little bees in their bonnets with doing shipping to Australia and other countries. Really, really weird. Um, I mean, even in the days of war, you know, you could still, stin <laughs> you could still send letters, um, you know, to war zones, potentially. Yeah, it's just really strange why it was Australia of all places that they couldn't send things to. Anyway. One of the many things I amuse myself with. Uh, have I got any of these? I do. 
seriously, I think I'm only going to have like three colours not used in this confetti section. It's going to be ooh, insane. Uh, tissue. Oh, I think that might be the last one. We had daylight savings today, so I'm looking for no entries and now I can't see any. Um, daylight savings today or overnight, um, so we lost the hour as we spring forward. I'm not sure when the rest of the world changes, I need to go through my calendars though and adjust for time because I have things like my favourite lives in my calendar um, to know what time they happen at so um, I can make myself available. I didn't watch Mrs. Coffee this weekend because we were uh, beetling around. Coffee's kind of going, because I have Mrs. Coffee in the middle of the Saturday and I really really enjoy catching up and um, you know it, I know it goes a mile a minute and she's got so many people watching these days it's quite insane but I join in as one of the moderators, if nothing else, um, and just keep an eye on the chat while it's flying past. And there's a bunch of us who kind of do that. Um, don't necessarily comment, but you know, see where it's going and and that kind of thing, and listen to the stories because, holy cow, <laughs> yeah, she's got so many stories. Um, so much happens to that woman in a week. It's <laughs> it's incredible <sighs> and have you seen her page her business page like mrs crochet and coffee holy cow she has been pumping out the cricket stuff um go check it out her etsy store is going to be opening very very soon now i don't know if it's an existing store that she is reusing the mrs crochet and coffee name i hope to goodness it is um but go and check out the store so she's got a bucket load of vinyls um, that she's going to be um, selling and some of the sayings on them are so cool um, she's having a ball with the cricket to be honest but she is fundraising to get her hubby Jordan a computer because he wants I think a bigger and better computer to be able to do his um, course with because he's doing mobile data thingy um, coding I think and he needs oh no no he needs an iPad for his drawing that's it and um, he was using hers and I think loved it uh, I think she's after the iPad Pro so if you can help her earn the money um, that's what she's doing to fund it so you know go you Alicia um, I'm very very proud of you for doing that um, some other spouses would not do what you're doing and um, I think it's a real credit to you that you're supporting him in doing that and it might seem like you know a drop in the ocean but it's huge support it really is both emotionally and physically to um, support your husband financially and get through and be able to you know use what you have um, kind of like the Proverbs 31 woman, use what you have at your fingertips to be able to um, do that, to, to give some joy and pleasure to your family rather than going, okay, we're going to take this out of our existing budget. No, she's earning the, the stuff on the side with what she already has. Um, or they've bought, you know, to be able to future plan and all that kind of thing. Um, so as I know, it's it's really really good. I remember what it was like when, um, I mean, I am I'm the earner now. I'm not the housewife. Um, so, but I remember what it was like when I was the housewife and didn't have my own money. And I know she's got the YouTube money. I know she's got the Patreon money. But that kind of you know probably funds the channel or whatever else money goes into. Um, but as a housewife, if there was a need like that, it's very hard to kind of go, 
where am I going to, you know, get the money to be able to get this for my kids or myself or my, you know, that isn't going to strip the household budget. Um, and yeah, it's, um, it's fantastic to have, I suppose, Etsy these days or even Facebook. It doesn't really matter. Um, although, you know, if she was selling on Facebook, there'd be less of a cut, I suppose, because, you know, Etsy takes its share, just like um, YouTube takes its money out of whatever super chats and everything else that are given. I don't know what they are. Anyway, um, you know, it's it's something that is being created. And I know um, I struggled when there was something and kind of said, oh, what am I going to do? What have I got that I can sell that, you know, do we sell what we own being, I don't know, books, clothes, and you kind of think, oh, I'm not going to get any money back from that. And yeah, but creating something new, that's all kinds of cool. Um, I can't remember what I used to do. I know I started working when Jenna was about seven. Um, I went back, but I think I went back to full-time then. Yeah, that was crazy. Whoever thinks, as a full-time parent, after being a full-time parent, you can go back into work and be a full-time parent and a full-time employee. Yeah, it doesn't work. I think your kids need you even more when you start working. It's like, ah! Start the plate spinning. Um... Now, after this couple of weeks leave, I don't know, Christmas will probably be the next time off, which in reality is almost like a blink away. Um, and I say this from the point of view of looking at things like the Peppermint Purple Stitch Along, um, where we're doing a week, um, a box a week, and you can see that there's so few boxes left. Um, you know, there's talk of Halloween. I know I need to get my head into gear for the Christmas premieres even, now that I actually stop and think about that. Um, you know, because next thing we know, it's going to be November already. And, yeah. Where is this year gone? Um, yeah, my sister over in Ireland had sent a WhatsApp message and I need to respond. I, I've been avoiding the responding, I think, because of the memories it's bringing up. Um, now, I've never met this woman um, that she's talking about, but it's her husband's sister. Um, and she is the 50-year-old virgin who got married. She's probably married about 15 years or more now. Um but um he is he's he's irish and he would talk your ear off um he didn't get on with my ex because there was a whole uh pissing against the wall kind of competition happening oh i did this and he did such and such and oh you know oh i did that and oh yeah i did it, you know and it was just like far out it was this whole kind of competition so you know I played the tin whistle while I played the trombone and yeah it just left your head spinning um so he's a little bit different I don't know how why my sister picked this man anyway um his sister died um recently so uh, and his brother had only just died and in covid state uh Ireland he didn't go and visit his sister before she died um, I think she had been in palliative care or something. Um, so, yeah, you get the whole you, mortality thing. And I kind of wish I had Dad's ear to be able to kind of twist here. Because he's 93 and he has had two wives die. He's had friends, brothers, sisters all pop their clogs and he's still going and how does he live with the everyone else around you is popping their clogs yet you're still going kind of mentality because I'm 48 and it you know I'm not at the pointy end but I kind of feel like I'm at the pointy end of life 
Does that make sense? You know, more of our peers, more of our people, more of the connections that we have start dropping dead now. Um, you know, um, Marcus is 51 and he's kind of going, oh, now I'm in the COVID bracket. You know, we've got um, all of this kind of scary or scarier kind of thing but yeah you, you start to kind of feel a bit more kind of fragile I know I am my back is certainly kind of making me feel like I'm older than I am and I hate it um I hate that I will I can sit here and be bubbly and moving and everything else and then I go to stand up and I feel like I'm like 10 months pregnant waddling down the house and kind of going ow <laughs> you know it's that kind of... It's exhausting. Yeah. And I just want to get to the stage where I can move without thinking again and feel like I'm not ancient, decrepit and about to pop my clogs, you know? Um, and feel a bit more like my dad who's 93 and still driving around and doing his own thing and blowing my mind um, yeah oops missed two um, and then like the memorial service I went to during the week um, he He was born in 37. He died in 2020. That would make him... Jeez, that would make him old. That would make him 17, so 83 when he died. And the last 10 years, like, dementia started to take him um, and that. But she is 80. I swear she looks about 60. She's so young and... I don't know, she's just got an amazing um, youthfulness about her. I think he kept her young, to be honest. He was a real joker. Um, and yeah, he did. And she would shake her head in exasperation at him, but I think he did. He kept her young. Um, I think we all need to keep that young spirit in us, don't we? Um, now, one of, one of the things I started doing, um, if you, uh, you'll have seen actually some of the photos that I took on the driving trip on my Instagram, if you already follow me on Instagram, if you don't, please come and follow me. Uh, it's pippabrown.sm, which is Pippa Brown social media, um, a social media account. Um, I haven't had a W in forever. I don't think I've got any here. Uh, Instagram, yes. Fat Mum Slim, uh, Chantel. I was part of this group. Sorry, uh, eight, nine plus years ago. And it is a photo a day group. It is international. It was started out as just a um, Australian thing. And then it catapulted into the world. And I joined probably after it had been going for maybe a year. And I was kind of occasionally seeing these FMS photo a day kind of things. And I was kind of like, what the heck is this? Well, what? Chantel does and I don't know how many photo groups there are that do this I know there's a 365 because I've got another friend from that group in that other group so I see the photos that he puts there and he's in Sacramento he moved from San Diego maybe but anyway he's living in Sacramento now um, and became a part of this community and in this community and this is you know eight eight nine years ago um one of these was a woman who um didn't know she was pregnant until she was in labor and we're all kind of going how the hell 
and we have watched this little girl far out she is five or six now little girl grow up in front of her eyes and um james was one of the people who spearheaded um i think shipping some stuff to her and then there was another chick who also was part of the group and she had um a bratz doll and uh i think the bratz doll went missing something happened that initiated this but the bratz doll ended up traveling around the world and sending messages back to delilah and we called the page hey delilah and um the Bratz doll traveled and sent messages of the adventures that she had been on and everything else. And again, we became a community through that. It was, you know, this little group of village all around the world. And it was really, really cool. Well, I think I hit the worst of my depression and tried clawing myself out of it. And the photo a day wasn't quite doing it anymore. Um, and I stopped, but I stayed in the group. So I continued to see the photographs, continued to see regular names, continued to watch all these different people, you know, crocheting a day. There was, um, so you, Chantel would organize the month to be, a th um, thematic in each day. So, um, Day one this month, I think, was a fence. Uh, day two was... Um, what was day two? Oh, um, it was the one... No, I put the photo up of the wallaby saying that we didn't have fences and the giant mice kept getting in, so the wallaby was in that. That was the fence. Yesterday was a for sale sign and I did a photo of somebody who is selling strawberry plants up at this town um, in Kempton and there was something else. Anyway, so there's a different thing that you aim for each day. Today, I, I can't even remember. Um, she used to have an app. I think the app has now lapsed and she doesn't have the app anymore, which is a bit of a shame. But um, you, because you used to get a reminder um, and everything else that would pop up saying, hey, you've got to look for a photo for, you know, an offense today. Um, so it was really helpful as a bit of kind of cue. Uh, now I've got to end. What was it? I think it was. Ah, I lost it. Uh, not to worry. I'm sure it'll pop up again. Um, oh, this is the. Try not to lose it this time. Um, some of the months Chantel would do would be the more boring months and it would be the letters of the alphabet A through to Z and then numbers 1 to 9 or whatever it is. Well one of the months um, this woman Deborah decided to knit an Amiga Amigurumi character for each of the days and they were just these little crocheted thingies. And it was so, so cool. And again, because you're commenting on these people's things, um, you, again, grow a relationship with them. You get used to the names and then you kind of hear, oh, such and such, you know, has died. And, you know, from this group, I have ended up getting to know um, an artist who actually, this was the image in my head, I think, um, when we had Chuck Pinson coming on the live. So I've seen Chuck's work for the last year, etc., on DAC. Right, well, um, this guy, was it? Um, Lawrence, someone Lawrence, David Lawrence, maybe, um, doing his paintings. He does 
realistic paintings so they are almost photorealistic they're so so good well he's an old guy you know with the white hair and the beard and he's gone on these retreat things and the photos that he takes are amazing um he should probably be in the whole dac you know artist stable and I think that was the kind of image I think I expected um, Chuck Pinson to be. Not a 40 plus, if he was even 40. Um, he was so youthful. It was amazing. Um, you know, who's doing these amazing things. Um, I hope you didn't uh, disillusion anyone. Now that you've had a chance, I suppose, to either catch up on that particular video. Um, I hope he didn't disillusion people with the fact that most of his locations are not real. Um, that he amalgamates them through, I guess what he calls, um, and he used the words visions. Um, and I think he does use that spirituality kind of thing, um, a lot. Um, I read The Shack, mm, probably, I don't know, a dozen, oh, I don't know, whenever The Shack came out as a book, I read the book and it blew my mind how it was written and the imagery that was evoked by the book and then it came out as the movie and I'm kind of thinking, how are they going to recreate this as a movie? You know, how are they going to personify who I had in my head as God, Spirit, um, um, Holy Spirit, uh, Son and Father. And it actually did pretty, pretty well um, in that whole rendition and imagining and everything else. Not quite as rich as the book, but it was pretty damn close. So if there's something that you want to watch that um, evokes something, um, watch The Shack, but more so read The Shack. Get the audio if you can get the audio, not an abridged version. Get the full version if you can. If it comes on audio, listen to it and just let it take you to another world. Um, I think that's what I love about books so much and in a way having crafts takes me away from books, takes me away from my imagination. Um, I'm watching um, Sophie lately and you know she'll watch TV with us and to be honest she might watch stuff that some parents would think now that's inappropriate or whatever. But she has started coming, running into us saying, scary, scary, scary. And it's like, what's scary? And she'll go, there's something scary in her room. And I think, where are you getting this idea that it's scary from? And it, you know, it could be from the comment, comic, sorry, not comments. It could be from some of the shows that she's watching. Like she watches Bing Bunny and actually Bing Bunny is a scaredy cat. He's actually a rabbit, but... <laughs> Uh, he's a whingy whiny little bunny um, and he does find things that are scary and Flop is his old mentor I guess and um, I think that's where she's got the scary from but she'll get scared at flies and then when I explain to her what it is she's kind of going fly 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 <laughs> you know and it, it's not scary anymore um I actually um, pinned a fly down and then she started giggling hilariously at this fly that was pinned by its leg, buzzing like crazy. And I was like, no, no, we're going to get the fly and we're going to put it out. In other times, I'm going to squash the fly because it's a fly. Um, and I don't think flies are necessarily useful. I mean, I know they digest bodies and, and that kind of thing, but I didn't need flies buzzing around in my home um, doing any of that kind of natural process um, going out to the cats at the moment along with the rain we had these juggernauts of bumblebees 
um, coming down to feed on the nectar of this weird, weird tree. Um, and look, I don't know if I will remember to go out and take a photograph of this. It's a very pale green leaf. It's twisted and whirled and curled. Um, like the leaf is too big for it at its outer edge kind of thing. So it's all buckled and everything. And it's got these tiny, tiny little black flowers with these little yellow pollen stamens. It's really, really weird. And it's shapeless, shaggy bush. It's a tall bush. I'm short. Okay. Excuse me. Um... So if I remember, I'll go out after this and I'll take a picture of these leaves. And um, flowers, but I do love um, seeing flowers. Like we were, when I was sitting with my friend in the park, um, <clears throat> it was a big green grass area with trees around the outer edge. There was an obstacle course actually for dogs, like a training agility test, that's, that's the, the term. Um, there was an agility test up in one corner. There was another, you know, rocky area. There was, I think they're going to be putting a, some kind of gully in so there'd be like drinking water for the dogs. Um, in this otherwise flat paddock grass space. Oh my God, there's another one. <laughs> and, um, while I was sitting there on the bench thinking, uh, there's not an awful lot around us. And I'm kind of thinking, I was just itching to take photographs of stuff. And I looked down and there's these tiny little five pointed white flowers. And then as I looked again, there was these tiny little purple things. Well, we've got the, um, these weeds, you know, um, Depending on who you talk to, um, if they're a garden lover or not, um, you'll get some people whose idea of weeds are of the devil, should not have any place in your garden, and they should be ripped out and burnt and, you know, all that kind of carry on. Well, the other theory is that a weed is just a misplaced plant. Flower, pretty flower. And there are some really, really pretty weeds out there. And... One of them that I love is this creeper that um, it, it's just like a, it's a runner, like a, kind of like a strawberry runner, if you ever see how they, you know, have runs. Um, so they stand out these big long tendrils. Well, this little runner, if you look really quite closely, they have these little rounded kind of leaves and they have these tiny, tiny little purple snapdragon flowers so if you've ever got a snapdragon um i don't know what the latin name is for it i'm very sorry for you um flower people but if you're a flower person and you know the snapdragon you know you squeeze the side of the face and the mouth opens up you know that kind of um flower and please you know tell me that you've never done that with a snapdragon because if you haven't go do it go be a child play with your snapdragons um and these little purple flowers, they're tiny, tiny, like this, uh, what would they be? They will be the size of the three-placer. No, they would be smaller than the three-placer. They'd be like the tip of the three-placer. They're really, really tiny. Um, and it's those kind of things that I love taking photos of and taking, um, you know, just stopping and kind of going, you know what, it might look like this is a blank car park. It you know with nothing but then you find these lumps of lichen and moss growing and things like that you know and it's kind of like oh you know they're still pretty even in a concrete jungle um you know that's the kind of thing that the photo a day used to bring out and that's the kind of thing that i think i missed looking for like what it would actually do would you know i'd have a theme and um I'd be looking for a for sale sign, for instance, okay? Now, I'm not gonna find a for sale sign within my house. And I might be, you know, pretty depressed and kind of thinking, oh, you know, life is miserable. I'm just a worm and, you know, somebody, you know, come and eat me now. I'm, you know, a sad sack, right? But 
if you kind of think, well, I've got to find this picture, it means that you've got to get out of yourself. It means you've got to go into your neighborhood. You may not find it on your street. It may not be outside your door, which means that you've got to venture further, which may, might mean that you've either got to get in your car or you've got to walk. Um, oh my God, there's another one. These things just keep popping up. And um, that's kind of what the photo a day thing would do. So it would get to the point where I was having to go out at lunchtime to find the photo for my project. And it would be like, oh, you know, um, water. And I'd kind of go, okay, water. You know, I could take a picture of my glass. It's pretty boring. Um, how do I make it? artsy how do I make it creative and it just I don't know it, having that creativity I think just pulled you out now if you compare your photographs um, to other photographers who might use um, a DSLR a camera that is big and chunky and oh my god this <laughs> Yeah, single, single lens reflex. A big, chunky, old-fashioned style shape camera, right? Or you could use your phone. I made it my point to use my phone. I made a point of how do I get the best picture with my phone, with my iPhone 4 back in the day. I think it might have been even. Um, you know, it was little. It was one megapixel if I was even lucky to have one megapixel for my camera. And I would still try and get the best damn photo I could with the gear that I had. I wasn't gonna, I found another two. <laughs> I wasn't gonna go out and I mean, I could have taken- I'm making comparisons to your former tenant. No, no, I wasn't gonna go out and dra get his camera. He had a DSLR camera. And I still wouldn't go out and take his camera for my photography. I did on occasion when there was something in particular or we were already out and we had his camera, I would take the picture that I wanted, but I still aimed, if I can't take it with my phone, if I cannot frame it with my phone, then I'm not gonna take that particular photo. So I got good at editing in camera as I call it, which is a technique that a lot of photographers will use, some better than others. And then some will take a picture and then go back to the, editing suite on their computer and edit the thing out of it and the photo in itself isn't a brilliant photo it's what they do after the editing that makes it a half decent photo so my kind of whole thing was no edit in camera frame it in camera focus it in camera and work out all of that kind of thing that was just my thing so I didn't compare myself to the slow-mos and people who could get the water drops and people who could play with the super fast footage and capture the balloon popping. There's some stunning, stunning work in there. And then there's just some really stupid, clever, uh, different takes on life. There was somebody today who took a picture of a donut label for the for sale topic. And it had the description, um, lemon, lemon donuts, blah, 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 with lemon turd. And she's taken this picture and it takes you a minute to go. Oh my God, <laughs> it's, it's not what you think it is. Somebody else had make a, made a mistake. Somebody else took a picture of it. You know, it's that kind of look on life. Um, the guy I talked about um, who lived in Sacramento, he made a point for so many years of never taking a picture of his face. He would always edit. So, you know, it was half of the face or, you know, and it was, it became a running joke that he never showed his face. Now he's got a dog now and God bless his socks. Judah has made him show his face so much more. Um, you know, and it's kind of like, oh, it's just, you know, it's just him now. And, and that kind of thing. And, you know, God, he got, he has pictures of the dog literally on his face in the morning. Like he's lying in bed still. And Judah is a, I think he's a staffy mix or something. He's a big boy and he's squashing his owner. It's ridiculous. Um, 
And there's so many photos that he's now taken of his dog. And, um, you know, it, I don't know, I think the photos are just make you show your everyday life as opposed to showing your Facebook life. Um, I have, I think, done a theme. It might have been a colour theme or something. Um, it's all on my personal Instagram account now, but um, I've locked it down. So unfortunately you can't see it. And no, I probably won't be friending you on my personal account because I don't use it. Um, I have actually started doing my photo a day on my um, public account because, you know, it's it's a craft, it's a hobby, it's um, something that I don't mind sharing um, and certainly didn't mind sharing. And yeah, I could potentially open up my personal account again for the photo a day, but um, yeah, I think it's just, it's time gone by and... And that kind of thing. Um, yeah. Um, trying to think, and I think I'm thinking out loud here, and I probably don't need to really think out loud, but I will. Um, the points to ponder. Have we got a point to ponder out of everything I've um, prattled on about today? Um, Oh, one of the things, she says, slightly changing the topic, that used to really stretch people on um, in the photo a day were people taking photos of themselves. Um, that actually was a huge challenge to most people. Um, and they... In, the, in a large part of it, people would get um, open and would say, I don't do this. Um, or they would hide and they, um, they wouldn't either show themselves or their soul or anything else. They um, had so much insecurity. And this is a worldwide phenomenon of people... Oh, my husband says he can explain it. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, photographers, uh, aka me. Okay, let's, let's say why, why I. You need to come well, closer to I, the camera. Why was I interested in photography? You need to come closer. Why was I interested in photography? I'll tell you. It's because it meant that I was the one behind the camera. Yes, and I did, did that too. So he's saying that he was the one behind the camera. I did that a lot. Would always take photos of the kids, not in them, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but he was, he's the kind of person who, um, will click away a million times and hope that one shot comes out. Whereas I will take one shot and <laughs> sometimes miss all the other, not, well, I don't usually miss the others, but yeah. Um, our phones currently, we have one pluses. If anyone's interested, it's one plus five. Um, one plus five T. Uh, it has a capability, and I don't know if this is a common thing. I know iPhones have it as well. Well, Google has some magic foo, and it actually will take your burst shots of however many, and will create animations out of them. I think the iPhone used to have. A burst shot but it would limit it to 20 or maybe Google Foo now limits it to 20 and so it doesn't continue going um, but you could effectively get these bursts of a photo and um, it then becomes a moving photo a, like Harry Potter kind of photo where it's literally just that snapshot in time and it just keeps looping um, it's really, really cool. It's it's really clever function. Um, but you can pick out your good shot out of a burst of photos. Digital photography really, I think, took us into a whole age of just keep clicking as opposed to film photography where you have 24 shots or 36 shots and once you've taken that photo, 
you've then got to wait until it gets developed. So you either go through a roll of film uh, in next to no time, which I have done. I've gone through a roll of film in a blink. Um, or And then you have to wait for it to be developed, which may take a day, or depending on how fast you process it through. It could be an hour or it could be a week. Um, and that depends on the size. And then you've got to sort through your photos to see were they any good. And that's unedited. That's not funking up the sky and making the grass a bit more green and making a bit of cloud move or whatever the heck else. Digital photography just opened up a world of creativity and room for error or fixing errors even. Um, I know this, uh, the Photoshop memes and people send in the photos to the Photoshop artist saying, hey, can you fix this photo? And then you get the funny results because it's not quite what they think they... Yeah, so they might say, hey, can you take this fat bastard out of the photo? And they'll actually edit out the person and leave in the, you know, the deemed fat bastard. Um, things like that. And the, yeah, um, they're funny because, again, they don't take life too seriously. Uh, yes, and then there's oh, Photoshop challenges. Um, Peter McKinnon had... Um, a photograph challenge where he had um, a photograph of a chick walking on sand boring as batshit and he had a photoshop competition where viewers could edit this photograph and make it something and people have photoshopped in mountains behind and walking on water and all sorts of stuff People got really, really creative, and that's just, you know, digital trickery. Um, yeah, some of them were really good. And he's a photographer. He goes to amazing locations. He's Canadian as well. Reminds me of my oldest boy, actually, and I said it to him. Um, he, uh, he got to 5 million subscribers, and he was kind of saying, hey, thanks. And, um, yeah, I sent him a message on the comments of the video going, oh my God, don't take this the wrong way, but you remind me of my son. And it's the whole uh, hip trendy beard, uh, drinking beer, doing insane things and having fun with life and everything else. And he's a lovely, lovely guy. He's early thirties. There's no way he could actually be my son, but um, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I think, yeah, praise should be given where praise is given. He actually has his new office and he's got a fireman's pole in it. He, and he does these outtakes. They're really, really funny, actually. Um, and a lot of other YouTubers are now doing their outtakes in their videos. Um, when they, I guess, edit them out, uh, in the first place. Well, I don't edit them out. I think if anything, I will edit it out. Um, shouting, yelling, Sophie crying, those kind of interruptions that, you know, blow the microphone kind of thing. Because, um, you know, you don't need to hear that. And you don't need to hear Sophie yelling or crying because she thinks it's time for something and it's not. Um, she gets quite fixated on that. But yeah, they will be things that I might edit out. Other than that, she's a star and, you know, might come in and ask for something, as you've seen. And then she'll toddle off and get something else. Or she'll ask her dad, because he's usually around when I record. Um, yeah. Or I've got a stash. That if she's really going to drive me up the wall, I might let her into. But then the problem is she keeps coming back for more. And at the moment she's forgotten about the stash. Oh, I've just spotted a nine. Oh, that was back a ways. Mm, no, maybe I haven't got to it. No, I thought I had. Oh!
amuse yourselves and then I found it my hand was sitting right next to it now am I going to find it after I've been looking away from the there they are seriously I do apologise, Julie, if you keep following on. If the, Julie is the one who is responsible for me doing this. Oh, I now spotted an A. Which is that one? Um, yeah, I do want to get this finished. I am really enjoying it. It's just, sorry, she's the person who got me this mystery diamond painting. And I am loving it. could have sworn I put the brown oh and there's two of them in there because it wasn't quite a square square edge oh come on nope there we go and that's that one and the plus was that's what you get. You get end up with jagged edges of um, finishing. So I'm just trying to fill in those. Ugh, come on. Gaps. I'll get there. All right, back to where we were. Um, eight. Um. Yeah, so I do some minor editing, but outtakes, the funny outtakes, end up being quite hilarious sometimes. Um, but it's really interesting watching a more seasoned um, YouTuber. Five million um, subs on his channel, and he's... Oh, uh, probably puts up a video, I don't know, once a week now i don't know how often he used to do it but at the moment it's like once a week um and he is yeah he's fantastic a lot of fun um and just enjoys having fun in amazing locations and now he's got the toys because he's got the income coming in from his thing and he gets sponsorship to be able to showcase and all that jazz when you get up there but um he gets to show off the snazzy cameras and the most amazing music he uses epidemic sound um who i did look into but you've got to pay some like eight or nine bucks a month and while it might be amazing um i'm not doing it yet and i'm quite happy with a lot of the free music that i can get at the moment um with the YouTube available. Lost. Something's lost. Yes, it's gone. Don't What's gone? What is? What's gone? Okay. That would be a reminder to have some more meds. That's fine, we'll just keep cracking on. Um, I think some of the issue with me, um, with the stitching, like I've had a blast at doing the stitching for the last two days, but it means I'm not at the computer <laughs> doing any editing or filming. Uh, I did actually consider doing a stitching whip and chat, um, but I had a look at what I needed to stitch and kind of thought, oh, no, this bit would be fairly quick, but then it gets into trickier territory and I need to count and concentrate. Um, on the linen, it's um, quite tricky to walk and talk uh, at the same time without having too long a gap of silence, and that's, you know, something that we can excuse me work away with here um, a little bit easier and 
There's another one. It's going to be a day of just jumping back and forth here. Confetti. husband's back a sentence I think he's he's got lag we watched a Facebook video of people trying to interpret computer lag that was weird um, where they'd start to go to the toilet or they'd enter the, the toilet room close the door and then the lag would catch up and they'd be outside the door going to drop their pants and sit down on nothing and yeah that was a demonstration of computer lag and it was like um no this is just weird <laughs> somebody jumped on a bed and then he was under the mattress rather than on top of the mattress and it was like uh no i don't get that yeah very 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 weird sorry no yeah hubby said not quite good enough to be a joke um Maybe I need. Yeah. There's so many things I need to do. I need to. I need a to-do list. I hate to-do lists. Um. Yeah, there's a couple of things I need to organise. I've bought a whole load of pens in the last couple of weeks. Um. On one of the groups, somebody posted a pen of um, olive wood from the Holy Land. And I was like, ooh, that's a thing. Yes, please. I'll have one of those. And that was from Dan Lazen, Dan Oleander um, from Lazen Lathe Works. So I've got a pen from him. I've got pens that Beth and Edward are working on for me at the Enablers Outpost. Um, oh, soggy Sparrow outside. Um, and uh, kind of creating some hybrids there so that's going to be exciting and um, also ordered from Jim um, who's uh, he does the videos on making pens now he's got a slightly different philosophy he has done his videos and he talks about how he gets the pen blank and he will just create it to the pattern in the pen and let the pen direct the shape. And that's what I said to Dan to do with the um, olive wood when it comes in as well. Um, rather than kind of saying, oh, I want a three bump with creases or rings or, you know, whatever. I think that is too um, dictatorial and um, you kind of lose the essence of what it is and and that. But then it depends on, I suppose, the carver. Are they creative and let the wood speak or are they dictating regardless? Which could end up making mistakes or breaking. Sorry, I'm looking. Uh. So if you, you push the wood in the wrong direction, you know, it'll snap because you're not intuitively listening to what the wood is telling you to do kind of thing. It, it, does that make any kind of sense? Um. I think anyone who's um, really creative probably understand that and I don't mean to um, belittle people who aren't creative what I mean is it's a I don't know it's it's just something much deeper than just drawing a picture but feeling the picture or feeling the sculpture or yeah anyway if you get it you get it if you don't get it it's okay oh, one more Here is a question for you um, to have a think about. Um, what is it that makes you tick? What is it that makes you passionate about something and 
makes you get up in the morning. I don't mean your screaming cat who's going to eat you alive if you don't feed them. But what is it that uh, when you talk about your, you light up as you talk, do you still have that? Uh, do you um, does it still happen or has that died and what killed it? What What's stopped it if it's stopped? And for those of you who have it, what keeps it going? What is it that you do that feeds it? Um, and uh, share in the comments. If there's something. I know at many points in my life I would have people say that question to me. And at some points, <laughs> invariably I was probably asked it when I wasn't actually passionate about something. I was actually in a dead zone. And they would say, well, what is it that gives you life? And I would have to stop and think and go, I, nothing. I, I feel nothing. Um, and um, I would have to have that pause. Uh, Another term is the Salah moment, or Sila, I think it might be the pronunciation, S-E-L-A-H. It's in the Psalms, um, right through it. And it Sila, or Sela, uh, means stop, pause, and think on this in the, um, what is it? This is the wordy translation. Um, oops, I'm sticking. Um, oh, gosh, it's... Bobby Houston's favourite Bible, um, not the NIV, uh, it's it's one of the wordy ones anyway, don't mind me, um, just trying to stick a piece of thing down, um, brain phase, it was, whatever the translation was, it would take one word and say black, and it would, um, in this particular version, may describe what the black was the inky dark of the night kind of thing um and i yeah i can't think of what the transfer the name of it is if i think of it i'll put it in because i'll look it up um anyway so yeah pause and think on this is a salah moment and it it's a little bit like um you know we get food every day but some things we need to chew on a bit longer um one of the bible terms actually was that we weren't on mother's milk anymore and we needed the meat we needed something to actually get us thinking um and yeah it was like um okay so what am i passionate about what is it that makes me animated that lights my soul what is it that lights your soul and if you've gone through depression chances are you've lost it the light is gone um now i'll say this in just a second um i've been there i don't think the light's gone i think the light gets covered and um if you're in a dark room a tiny bit of light the tiniest tiniest bit of light will be seen if you're in a light room the tiniest bit of dark won't get seen. Does that make sense? So, if your light has been covered, um, it's about uncovering it and finding that. And it only takes a spark. It only takes a spark to reignite it. Um, so, uh, people kind of say, oh, no, I can't. I can't go for a walk or I can't do things and they limit themselves um i know i have and hubby will um berate me greatly um if he thinks i'm being hypocritical by saying oh you should do this i'm not saying you should i'm just saying um this is what it was for me and he's gone through depression himself um and we've both at times 
gone through the whole medication depression, but it's uh, it's hard work thinking in a healthy way as well. It's for me anyway. It wasn't enough just to be on the meds. It had to be a thinking change, and it hasn't always worked. Um, once the um, the highway of depression gets made and the serotonin gets taken off track and you stay in that spiral um, I think it's very easy to um, get back onto that path again and it takes a huge concerted effort not to go down that road and make it a travelled path again. It, you know, um, sorry, my brain is going a million miles an hour with visuals and I don't know how to get those visuals out. Um, yeah, I, I, see this is the thing and I, I guess it's where I've always been or sat and this is why I end up getting tongue-tied and frustrated because my mouth almost limits what my creative I don't know mind's eye can see and try and visualize and and that kind of thing I had um and I guess, it, and this is another thing that I would want to do something, but then wouldn't know where to find the resources and then would talk myself out of doing this. And as a result, it just got covered up. If it's the light, um, it would get covered up. But I had this vision for a song that I wanted to um, choreograph, for want of a better term. Um, and... Uh, I think I spoke to some church pastors at one point and it was like, yeah, no, oh, what it was. I spoke to somebody on the creative team and they went squash and didn't capture it. And I didn't know how to get it out to the point where they would catch that vision. Um, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, yes, it's very frustrating being in my head sometimes. It's very frustrating being in my head sometimes. Oh, yes. <laughs> I didn't ask you to agree. And I guess that's, I think, part and parcel why, when I was a kid, I escaped into books, why I escaped into uh, stories that were different from my reality, that were maybe even more miserable than my reality. I didn't like the dark stuff. I didn't like the Stephen Kings. I didn't like the Virginia Andrews, although I read them. Um, and then I got into some really dark stuff and I was like, whoa, not liking that at all. Uh, don't get a lot of the, um, there's some genres out there where they're talking about, um, I suppose, some form of um, BDSM kind of style of writing. I don't understand the whole um, master-slave kind of, um, mentality, the owning of women, because it's never being owned by a man, by never women owning men. Um, it's always men owning women, and the whole oh, they actually fall in love kind of fairy tale. It's it's very very weird. I what was that, Marcus? I haven't read all the right books. Oh, I've read *Kill a Mockingbird*. <laughs> Oh, well, the, how do you mean the on opposite side? With an owning man. Oh, 
Okay. Now, I don't... This is an interesting talking point, I suppose. And in some ways, I kind of wish he was a bit closer with the mic. Um, but it is an interesting talking point. It is predominantly the women being... Let's use, I'm using this term very, very loosely, saved. Women being saved by, you know, whatever. Whether it's the cowboy or something. It is rarely coming from a man looking to be made whole. Now, I know it's not always true, but it's never the man being fulfilled by the woman because the man being fulfilled by the woman is usually by, if it was a role reversal, a very powerful woman, a woman who knows what they want, goes for what they want and has the job now they're all billionaires because millionaires aren't rich enough. Um, but in real life, and this is a discussion that Marcus and I have had before, when it comes to separation and divorce, and I think this is something Mark Gunger, if you're familiar with him, he's a US pastor who is crazy, uh, good crazy. But um, he talks about how some men are not made to be alone whereas you will get many many women who are um they um they don't have need uh of a man whereas some men cannot function without having the woman um as a companion and i don't mean as the um, the person who does all the thinking for them. I mean as a companion, as an equal, as a help meet, which is what I think the term husband-wife should have been from a Bible point of view. Help meet rather than servant or anything like that. But it's a person that equals the scale, balances the scales. Um, there are some men out there that are not made to be alone, and which is why they might move on much quicker than a woman. You will find a woman potentially will live alone for 10, 20 years, bringing their kids up. You will not necessarily find a man who will do that. Um, and this was something that this um, pastor or Marcus had both remarked on at separate times. Um, you know, he, Marcus himself has said he didn't think he ever was... He didn't want to be alone, but he couldn't find anyone who just wasn't after the, you know, the casual one night stand kind of thing. He he was trying to find his companion and he wasn't finding it in a lot of the women. Now, it's a, I mean, not necessarily all, but you don't hear of. I'm not even going to go there. He's been doing a survey, he thinks. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm not here to drag up dirt or anything, so I'm not going into dusty places. <laughs> um, but, you know, it is a kind of... I don't know, maybe it's the men don't want to be seen as... Um, it's not needy, but don't want to be seen as... I don't know. What is it? What... What is it? I mean, I know you read the soppy romantic novels that all the housewives flock to, that, you know, the days of our lives, not days of our lives, Hallmark TV shows. Um, there is this fairy tale dream of finding the one true love, the tall, dark and handsome stranger, blah, blah, you know. And why? Um, where do these mythical creatures come from first. Oh God, I'm talking about the women here. <laughs> oh God, yeah. Dear. You know, we get locked in on these whole, but it's got to be fairy tale and he's got to be this, that and the other and 
and then of course they never turn out to be in quite the same packaging and you kind of go well that can't be it I don't know why am I in a dark place at the moment No, I'm just thinking. Nothing wrong with thinking. And questioning. I, st <laughs> I think it was in... Um, uh, it, it's been within the last couple of days. It could be Harry Potter. It could have been the funeral I went to. I don't know. I think it might have been the funeral the memorial service and it was like well why are we here and it's like well why are we here you know if there is nothing else fuck that's depressing if there is nothing else what are we doing with our lives if there is something else meh we can waste it and we're not losing anything because you know we've got eternal life at the end of it that we can fill all the gaps in but I don't know are, what are we doing with our lives and I asked that question to me and it's like what am I doing with my life am I you know frittering it away um, and it's not apple fritters and ice cream oh, they're so good um, sorry <laughs> no, apple fritters and ice cream apple fritters I haven't had apple fritters and ice cream in so long like 20 years so long uh, no it was a favourite Japanese restaurant that I used to go to Japanese no Chinese restaurant anyway don't mind me food I'm hungry um you know, but there is that existential question, I suppose. If you had uh, unlimited money, would you do what you're doing today? If you had um, a year to do whatever you wanted to do, what would you do? Those kind of questions. And the kind of people who ask that are kind of the motivational speakers who go around the traps, the, you know, Tony Robbins and... And things like that and they kind of say well why aren't you doing it why aren't you getting out and living why are you stuck where you're stuck um, and for some people it will give them the spark to be able to say yeah I can actually do this and get that fire burning again because like I said it's covered it's not gone um, I think we think it's covered when it's not visible, but it's just, um, sorry, we, we, yeah, we think it's gone when it's just covered. Um, and we don't think it's left inside of us. And it is, I think, I think it is. Um, I've gone through stages of, um, loving the photography or loving the craft. And I think that's why we keep maybe chopping and changing for the crafts because, in some ways we maybe aren't doing what it is we really want we're kind of chasing the dragon as a term it's like the the next drug fix almost um you know where is that next purchase going to be what is that next thing is it about the buy is it about the buzz of the buy excuse me um you know and i'm not talking about the whole uh, giving into the easy fix I'm talking about the are you willing to do the hard yards putting the work in um, to get the result it's you know because uh, it takes time to earn the money to pay for a diamond painting it takes time to set up the diamond painting into the containers it takes time and investment to do the diamond painting are you somebody who does something or are you something someone that just starts something do you ever finish what you start and in the instant fix society that we live in and the disposable society that we live in it is very easy to get um, washed away in the hole and I'll get the next one and I'll get the next one and I'll start this one and it, the start's exciting but the hard work isn't 
in everything. Um, hang on a second. I've got one of these is coming up because I'm rubbing against it. So I'm going to take that off and I'm going to steal this. Um, hard work doesn't get rewarded often unless uh, no it doesn't get rewarded often people don't like being in the back room um, they like the limelight they don't like what happens in the back room they don't like what goes on unseen um, and because it can often be that solitary act that, where the work is being done, um, it's dismissed, it's given to other people to do, um, and um, it's not always something that you can pass on um, because you, you've got to soul search yourself to find it. Um, gosh, this is getting a bit deep. Um, does that make sense? My husband is um, currently on the topic of uh, integrity. It comes up quite a bit lately. Uh, what am I doing? Um, tea. And how, you know, and it's something simple like vacuuming and vacuuming with integrity or cleaning up with integrity or you know doing a task and it, you get the bare minimum because the bare minimum is always accepted um, and that's a, it's a modern society thing you know you get a reward just for showing up kind of crap um, rather than you get a prize because you put the effort in, um, you know, schools are notorious for it. Um, you know, here's a prize, Johnny, because you did this. And, you know, sometimes it's an effort to get there. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Show up, you get a prize. But sometimes it's just like, put the frickin' work in. Um, you know, the, our school mottos, um, strive, uh, to do your best. In fact, one of the other school mottos that we passed was also something about striving. I thought, what the hell? <laughs> it's a bit of a theme. Um, so maybe it's, I don't know, Tazzy Wide or something. I don't know. Um, but it was this whole striving. And, you know, I kind of think of uh, Chariots of Fire, where you've got the whole, you know, classical music with the running and, you know, the, the race and the sprinting and the effort involved by the runners and you know well I'm sorry but you can't win if you don't put the effort in um, people who do sports know this um, they know how much pain goes into it you look at a ballet dancer's feet and you'll see the pain that goes into it the behind the scenes work the effort the cry the tears at the end of the day kind of effort that kind of thing um, you know, all of that's the unseen work, but yet the what does get seen is front of stage, lights on, pretty costumes, Swan Lake, and a big beaming smile. You know, they don't see the the agony behind what put them on the the front of stage. They don't see the years of work because you know a ballet dancer doesn't start at the age of. 20, they start at the age of, I don't know, two or three or something. Watch some of the ballet dramas and you'll see that kind of thing. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, I have, oh, I'm nearly there. Okay. I know we're nearly at the two hour mark. Um, and I've certainly talked about some pretty weighty stuff. I hope I haven't. Um, got too scary. Oh, I've got two colours left. That's that's pretty cool. Two colours? I have two colours left in my bag. Seriously, I have not used... Let me see. Oops. I have not used one, two. I have two colours not used in this square. 
out of 39. I've used 37 out of 39. That's insane. Uh, and there's number three. Hang on a second. No, there's a few more of that. Let's see. Three, 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 three. Is it three? Um. Oh, I need three again. Oops. Where's that? Ah, comes on. I pushed it right down. Uh, before you start thinking, oh, you know, I've got it made. I'm on YouTube. Um, you've got kids, you've, you're married or whatever. Now, I don't always have it together. I don't handle stress very well. Uh, hubby and I will have strong disagreements about how well I handle stress. And strong disagreements when I don't tell him before I have the mishandled stress that something is stressing me or something has happened um, to make my brain start that spiral um, and ending up going on to depression highway. Um, you know? Uh, I, yeah, I spent years psychoanalyzing myself and reading self-help books and all that kind of thing. The joys of time that you have available to you as a housewife. <laughs> I don't have time for that now. So it's probably just as well I've done a lot of the reading. Now I've just got to remember the stuff, if it's in there at all. Um, yeah. But that noise, if you hear the noise, I'm not sure. Uh, it's a low drone, probably just in the background. That's hubby making gravy or grinding vegetables or something. He is so obsessive over what he does and puts so much work into making a roast dinner that I don't bother with because that's who he is. Um, yeah. No, I said I'm obsessive. Yeah. See, I wouldn't bother grinding the vegetables, but he will go to that, you know, little bit more extra effort. And I was like, why? But the end result speaks for itself half the time. So, yeah. Why do you think you're here to say you don't like the tank? Mm, yeah, because, uh, anyway, not now. <sighs> right, see? My fault. Um, all right, so as we're kind of uh, wrapping up, I haven't actually got much of a clue what I'm doing this week. Um, I know I'm off work tomorrow, so I will get some more videos done tomorrow for the rest of the week. Um, I have some weird unboxings this week, or envelopings. Um, I got some cover minders, which you probably have already seen because this goes out on the Wednesday. Um, I got some cover minder bits from a polymer artist called Ira in the Ukraine or Lithuania. Um, and uh, I think I've got a knit crate that I've opened. Um, had a lot of fun doing my floss tube. Um, I'm waiting to see how long it takes for Flosstober to become a buzzword on the internet. That's a Rachel term. I thought it was brilliant. Um, yeah, very, very catchy. So I, that's why I think it'll actually catch on. Um, she is doing a daily vlog. Um, I would love to do something like that someday. Like a day in the life. Um, I don't upload from my phone currently. Um, so I don't quite know how I would do something like that. Oh, Marcus is saying set up Patreon. Yeah, I would do Patreon lives. Um, oh, just for the vlog. Uh, yeah, maybe. 
maybe? Yeah. Um, I, I have no idea where I'd start with the video log. But then, does anyone? Um, it's not like I haven't blogged before. I mean, geez, and you'd get some pretty, look, you get some pretty random thoughts, even in two hours. So, I mean, yes, you might get a daily update, but would you get that esoterical thought? Because, you know, the brain starts going into relaxed mode and just kind of drifting with the sands. I don't know. I don't know. So I don't know what you'd get. Um, I have thought about it. I would love to be able to be um, a little bit more open, but I'm not going to go fully open on something like YouTube. So, yeah, maybe on something like Patreon and Top Top Tier um gets the really deep and meaningfuls you know this happened you know or something got to keep it professional anyway too um that kind of thing and i'm just talking about my job um so yeah there's there's all of the the brain thinking going on in the background so yeah we'll see how we go um and then this time availability hubby is kind of saying look i want you available on the weekends and i'm kind of going yeah but when am i supposed to do the recording and my poor little computer brain takes you know just as long to edit yeah i'm only saving 10 10 dollars a fortnight um but, you know, it takes time to edit a video, it takes time to do the video, then it takes time to upload the video. I, I'm getting better with my planning. Um, so, what ends up happening? He's cooking the roast, right? And I'm recording. And then I will end up uh, starting to process this while we're doing the roast, eating. And um, it will process then while I'm eating and then I will flick it to upload when we finished eating, you know, so that kind of time management I'm getting there um, But if I do something like a vlog kind of thing, it wouldn't be a processed thing. It would be uh, Much more raw and dirty and if I do it from my phone, it's gonna be, you know, potentially wobbly and that kind of thing and I don't want to have it uncomfortable to watch but I'd love to you know take you on the drive that we did at the weekend kind of thing take you on driving to work it's boring as batshit um you know um tell you about plans for the day I, I don't know what I would do honestly I don't know what I would do but anyway right I'm done uh that oops upside down goes there and the ever important roller oh one crack Oof. all right let's see so more grass done uh yeah every color bar too <laughs> yeah confetti 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 I'm loving this though. Really am. Alright, I will now let you go. It's over two hours. I hope you've enjoyed thinking and doing and you've made some real progress on your work. Um and um yeah, I hope maybe I've you know stretched your thinking a bit, you know, um got you wondering what you might be able to do to I don't know. Think bigger think bigger all right um if you haven't already subscribed please click subscribe click the bell to get the notification of when i upload it's generally at a set time um every weekday and then i do flossy stuff on the weekends um yeah come and join me on this crazy journey that i'm on um it still blows my mind um yeah but uh, yeah please um like subscribe please 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 drop me comments let me know how life is in if there's you know stuff that you want me to talk about or there's an esoteric thought that got you kind of thinking and kind of got you maybe out if there are links that you are interested in please 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 send me a message and i will put them in so things like the fat mom slim if you're interested in the photo group i will 
then let you know what the actual phrase is that you need to search on Facebook or send you the link for the group or whatever it might be. I don't know what it is that you might pick as your gem out of this video. So um, if there's anything at all, please just let me know. And um, I will see you around on the tubes. And yeah, bye for now. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rain fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand.